Welcome to the Innova Buzz podcast, where our job is to help you build visibility, professional credibility, and connection with your ideal client by putting the human at the center of innovative marketing so you can build and strengthen an engaging, enduring relationship with your ideal clients. I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and I'm honored that you're here with me. If you haven't joined our wonderful marketing transformation community yet, go to innovabiz.co and collect your free gift as well. Do subscribe to the show and also leave a review because it helps others find us. Let's get into today's masterclass on this InnovaBuzz podcast. I like to call feng shui acupuncture for your home. And it is a very ancient technique that is used to bring your home into balance for health and for wealth. So obviously, um, having an environment that supports you energetically for health and wealth is going to support you in your business. And, you know, when I say home, it means every premises. So it can be your office, your shop, your you know, whatever space, it's literally a space that you spend time in and that has four walls and a roof um, can be feng shui. Welcome back. I hope you've had an awesome week so far. If you haven't listened to my recent conversations yet with Maxwell Nee of High Performing Coach and with Michael Dietrich Chastain, the author of Changes, then do check them out, but only after you've listened to today's conversation. Today, I'm really excited to have on the Innova Buzz podcast as my guest, Patricia Lohan. She's the creator of Feng Shui Mastery and author of The Happy Home, a guide to creating a happy healthy, wealthy life. Patricia is a feng shui expert, a healer, and a passionate female entrepreneur who has shaped her dream life living in Bali with her husband. Patricia has a gift at making feng shui simple and easy to understand and implement. She's helped thousands of people across the globe embrace feng shui and create lasting changes in their homes, in their lives, and in their businesses. Patricia has seen firsthand the power of the mind, her surroundings, and inner healing, clearing and aligning everything so it works holistically. Patricia also hosts the Live Your Dream Awake podcast. In our discussion today, Patricia talked to me about finding your passion through a journey of self-awareness. We talked about creating a positive environment in business and about turning live training programs into online programs. Without further ado then, let's fly into the hive and get the buzz from Patricia Lohan. Hi, I'm your host Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz and I'm really excited today to welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast from a beautiful Greek island looking over the Aegean Sea. Patricia Lohan of Parashakti Global. Patricia is the creator of Feng Shui Mastery and author of The Happy Home, a guide to creating a happy, healthy, and wealthy life. Welcome to the Innova Buzz podcast, Patricia. It's a great privilege to have you as my guest. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. Natasha Vorompiova, who was our guest on episode 311 of the Innova Buzz podcast, suggested that we have a conversation with you, Patricia. So a big hello to Natasha. Yes, I love Natasha. Hello. Now, uh, you're also host of the Live Your Dreams Awake podcast, which mm-hmm. is something we might touch on later on in our conversation. But reading through your profile you kind of went from being a yoga teacher and cycling your way around Dublin and there's a hint of an Irish accent there um, to creating a multiple six-figure successful business so how how did you make that transformation (laughs) um it's a pretty drastic transformational light um essentially for me 
One of the things was um, finding the one thing that I was super passionate about and um, sticking with it. So um, for me, uh, it was feng shui, but it didn't come to be straight away. So I got distracted by many different shiny objects on the journey. Um, I actually got my first books about feng shui when I was um, 16 years of age. So it came to me very, very early in my life, but I didn't ever realize or contemplate that it could become such an amazing amazing business but also beyond that just makes such a huge impact on the world for the people that we work with so um uh, my kind of journey was really, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family and my um, resistance to that um, played out when I went to university and really wanted to um, work nine to five in a corporate environment because I didn't want to be like my parents. Unfortunately, I don't know whether it's the nature nurture, nature nurture thing, but um, when I got into that environment, it just was so alien for me that I couldn't stick it for longer than a couple of months in a job and I was like okay there's something wrong it's not the job it must be me but that didn't work out for me so I ended up coming back and working with my parents in their business fulfilling my parents dream and my father's dream particularly and after several years working in that business very successfully um I did a lot of the marketing, the PR, the promotion kind of like was the driving force of that business for them. Um, I was burnt out, totally exhausted. And my mom actually was the person who noticed it. Um, she had been visiting my sister in Australia and everyone was like, God, it must be so far away from Ireland. Like she's so far away, she's so sad. And I was like, no, she's just so happy. How could I be sad? And she turned around and saw me. And I was pretty miserable at this stage because I just wasn't fulfilling my passion. And I didn't know what that was going to be, to be honest. So I ended up, um, my mom suggesting uh, very kindly, I think you need to leave. Um, and I said, yeah, I'm going to go to India to become a yoga teacher. And to be honest, for me, the yoga thing was, it was an opening, you know, like there was this gap in it was a path to get me onto the right path, I think is what I call it. And the yoga was this physical opening, but actually it opened me kind of mentally, spiritually on every aspect. Now going to India to become a yoga teacher was a pretty drastic response. Um, I let go of everything and just went on this journey of really finding myself. And interestingly enough, that journey led me back to my 16 year old me passion. Um, but I didn't realize that was the actual thing it was going to be. Um, when I went to India, I um, trained in lots of different modalities and I came back to Ireland and hadn't really touched on feng shui until I moved into a new apartment. And at that time, I was cycling around Dublin, earning five euros for a yoga class and um, not really knowing like where my next money was going to come from. And I set up a practice working with people, um, releasing trauma, anxiety and having that practice grow very substantially um, and interestingly enough the yoga kind of went by the wayside like it was like okay this isn't going to like really bring in the money for me and it wasn't just about the money I just love teaching it but it was like this isn't quite it I'm being called for something else and different things presented themselves and my practice got busier my clients started kind of presenting different things so in India I opened up this gift of deep intuition and um kind of uh, this space where I would ask them questions and be like, well, how did you know about that? You know, and I'm like, well, um, I, don't, I don't really know, but this is what I'm being asked to present to ask you. So in those sessions, I would start asking them about their houses and their homes and tell me about your house. Tell me about your apartment. What's going on? How long have you lived there? And they would look at me and be like, what is this to do with my seven year old self that had a trauma of whatever? Um, and I was like, OK, I need to start paying attention and, you know, paying attention to what's being presented. At that same time, I got myself a new apartment in Dublin. And um, when I was finally able to afford renting a place, I'd been sleeping in a single room in my friend's apartment. And um, I got my own place. And I said to a flatmate, this new girl who was sharing with me, I'm not leaving here until I meet my husband. She laughed her head off at me. And I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feng shui this place. So I went back to those books. I feng shui my apartment. And very soon afterwards, I actually met my husband. And that created this huge ripple effect because everyone started asking me, how did you meet Ken? Like, how did you meet him? Oh my God, he's amazing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and that was like, well, I used feng shui. 
Um, and that became this whole ripple because when I went to Ken's house for the first time, he actually used feng shui also. So it was um, for me a little bit of a destiny thing um, using feng shui. And when we came together and I moved into his house, um, we came together, we then do dove deeper and both trained even deeper in the feng shui practice. And very quickly, our lives completely transformed in front of our eyes, but also the people around us. Like financially, my business just started to grow. I got more clients and um, Ken got more like clients and work for his business. And it was like, what have you done? And I'm like, well, we've just used a resource that we already have, our home. Um, you doing the feng shui and that's what it really how it all unfolded literally and um, from then people kept asking and we decided to travel um and go online so i had some friends mentors who i knew who'd been doing work online and i was like you know what i love travel it's one of my um and freedom is one of my core values so how can i bring my business um to be in alignment with my values but also be sharing like amazing helping people get amazing results in their lives by just working with the energy of their home. Mm. All right. Well, um, for those that aren't familiar with feng shui, tell us a little bit what it is and, and how it works in a business context in particular. Yeah. For in a business context, you know, um, just a lot of people, there's a lot of um, misconceptions about feng shui. Um, they might think I'm going to come and move all their furniture, throw everything out and paint your house white and put some weird frogs hanging up on in a certain corner. And that is like none of the above. Um, essentially, I like to call feng shui acupuncture for your home. And it is a very ancient technique that is used to bring your home into balance for health and for wealth. So obviously, um, having an environment that supports you energetically for health and wealth is going to support you in your business. And you know, when I say home, it means every premises. So it can be your office, your shop, your you know, whatever space, it's literally a space that you spend time in and that has four walls and a roof um, can be feng shui. Um, and this, mm. so when we talk about um, feng shui for the business, you know, many companies across the globe use feng shui for productivity, for profitability, and for their, you know, growth to create this positive environment for their employees, but also for their customers. For example, every Whole Foods across America is feng shui. Um, Disney uses it. Um, so many uh, Bank of America, all of the um, big hotel chains um, use it in their business, in their um, design process as well. So it's absolutely a phenomenal um, tool that you can use um, for really creating a space that's going to enhance your life. So essentially, you know, we can all be doing the work on the inside, working really hard, promoting and marketing. But if there's an energy block um, in our home or in our environment, it's going to be stopping that flow. So most people come to me when they've either hit a plateau in their life or business and they're like, I'm doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing. I'm working really hard, but I'm not seeing the abundance or I'm not being recognized in my business. I'm not getting the visibility I'd like, you know, so that's where it's like where they're, they're hitting up against a wall of like, what else could I do? Um, and oftentimes when they find me, there's no accidents, it's their home or their um, office that needs to be realigned. Mm. So there's a lot of um, people both online and in person doing work on with people in business around mindset and business coaching around kind of that inner game, if you like. So mm -hmm. you're essentially working on the environment, the, the outside environment, but both of them kind of work together, right? Yes. Exactly. They are in total unison. Um, and for me, what happens, and also when we have that whole huge explosion right now in this personal development and mindset world, which is phenomenal and so powerful, but actually um, what I see is that they are doing that work as well. And then this gives like this extra boost because when we start working on our physical environment, it actually mirrors back into our own personal energy as well. So, you know, like even just logically, if you're house is feeling like a bit messy or a bit like you know all over the place you feel it too um the same goes for when it's energetically unbalanced as well hmm. 
So what are some of the typical mistakes that people make because they don't know any better? I suppose one of the things, especially from a business context, um, when I am on Zoom calls or um, on you know group calls or watching different classes, I see people in their positioning um, and setup of their actual desk and office is something that um, we kind of take for granted. You know, um, right now, um, a lot of people have been pushed into probably working from an environment that not isn't hasn't been kind of optimized or set up to be the office space. But also I see, um, employ, um, you know, people who decide, OK, I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to work from home. And then they take the smallest little corner in, in their house and squash themselves in as opposed to going, OK, well, hang on a minute. This is going to be like where I'm going to spend most of my time, where I'm going to be doing my sales calls, where I'm going to be creating my content, you know, all of those perspectives, like how important is this and making their workspace a priority. So the the things that I would say for in terms of making your workspace a priority, one would be actual like physical setup of your space. So first of all, like where are you sitting? Are you sitting with your back to do the door, with your desk pushed into the corner where you can't see what's coming at you, where you're feeling when you kind of like actually a little bit hemmed in, whereas, um, or with like an, an unstable chair. Like I've done so many uh, office consults over the years and I've had people sitting on broken chairs, on garden chairs, on small like little chairs that are just uncomfortable, you know, uncomfortable that are not supporting the person at all, you know? So it's like, okay, first of all, what are you sitting on? Like, look at it and go, does this represent like CEO material? Like, is this a CEO's chair? Because when you think of a CEO, you think of like, oh my God, they've got the biggest, best office, a great chair, a strong desk, you know, sport, supporting wall behind them. And you might be listening going, but I don't have any of those things or I can't get, create that space for myself. And, you know, this is where it's like, well, how can you create that space for yourself? You can definitely upgrade your chair. You can start and look at the physical desk that you sit at and go, right, well, you know, the more stuff on my desk, the less space I have to create, the less space I have in my mind. So let's like organize that. Is my desk nice and steady? You know, we want stability, we want strength. So it's like all these different parts of our, um, of our office are like mirroring back to us. So for me, a big one will be trying to get yourself in a position where you can have the wall behind you, where you can see the door um, and where, you're, where, you, where you have like clear boundaries about this being your workspace. So I do see a lot of instances when it comes to a workspace that, you know, is confused. Like it can be, it has like children's toys, you know, books, your husband's, um, you know, train set, suitcases, exercise equipment, all of that stuff mm. in that workspace is distraction from what you are actually meant to be doing in that space. For me, I want you to think, well, how can I make this space feel inspiring? How can I feel this space feel like, um, you know, have my raisin to Etsy, you know, if you have a family, maybe you should have your family photo on your table, like, or your desk saying, well, this is what I'm doing it for. Like, this is why I'm here. You know, what's my bigger vision? Do I have my vision board there? Or do I have some imagery that represents where I'm going, as opposed to lots and lots of paperwork from an old business that is defunct now, which, you know, is something that I've seen in many offices, actually, over the years. Mm hmm. Yeah, and uh, I think they say that a cluttered desk is a cluttered mind, or I think that's something that I kind of recall from the past somewhere. Yeah, for sure. It is, and it's... um. It's that sense of, you know, making your workspace align with where you're going. Mm. All right, and, and now these days, you alluded to it before, you're traveling around the world doing consulting I guess and doing a lot of online work around feng shui and I know you're also doing retreats um, mm -hmm. to well I guess I tell us about the retreats and what what do you do on those um so I do retreats around the world um what has happened in our business is we created um an online program to help people feng shui their homes so it really 
passes the power over to them to work with their physical environment. Um, and we have a beautiful program, it's called Powerhouse and people submit their information. So it's the whole power of literally the online world and being able to do things online now. Um, we can feng shui people's homes from a distance, which is so beautiful and created an amazing community. And this is where the retreats came from because we have a beautiful community of like-minded women who absolutely love the feng shui. They've seen great transformation in their lives. And um, I travel a lot. So I'm either in Bali or in Greece or America and all these beautiful locations. And they requested, you know, Patricia, why don't you do retreats? So obviously I have um, my yoga um, teacher, tr teacher training. I also have like my other Mary Poppins bag of tools and modalities that I learned um, <laughs> as like a shaman and energy healer and just a, a meditation leader. Um, so that like gets this opportunity to kind of be unearthed during um, these retreats. So essentially it's, you know, at what the one of the women described as is this like feng shui for life, like it's feng shui level two. Um, so we're working on all, most of the women actually, yeah, everyone has usually as part of my feng shui community, they have done my powerhouse program, their houses are activated and now they want to travel or they want to get more connected with themselves or, um, you know, just have a space away. So that's what I do. I've created these retreats around the world um, and women come from all over the world to connect. Uh, obviously, Bali is a beautiful spiritual place where there's lots of um, beautiful practices um, connected even just to the five elements. As I said, feng shui is um, acupuncture for your home and it really is based very heavily on the five elements so that's kind of how it on earth so it's really responding to my clients requests essentially uh, the retreats unfolded mm. that's fascinating so the function the online program is that uh, a training program that's self-service or do you actually work with people through um, remote connections? Yeah, so um, we have um, kind of like different levels, but all of our clients um, who join our world, we create a personal report for them. So um, it's not a... Um, you know, a, a do-it-yourself pro process. Um, we actually do mm. analyze every single client's um, home. We've built software to be able to analyze what they submitted to us. So they send us photos and different information of their house, and then we can give them a personalized report. Um, and what happens is when they move through the, uh, the through the, the powerhouse online program to teach them how to implement their personal report. And we also have a community and I do live calls every single week. So it's um, really, they kind of get to take ownership of the energy of their homes using their personal report and implementing it step by step. Um, I do uh, also do um, sessions with clients if they want to work with me one to one and they just want me to say, this is what you have to do. Do this, do this. I don't want to watch any videos. I just want to feng shui my house. Um, I do offer that service as well. Um, but what we found has been so beautiful is that when we when I did feng shui consultations in Ireland um, in person, it was a very um, raced experience because you'd like get to their house. There was so much analysis to do and so much work to do um, with without even just having that quality time with the client to show them exactly what they need to do to explain why we do this, what the results are, how to access the resources. Um, and this is why the online program has just blown my mind because obviously we know that action, um, like literally putting the, putting the um, recommendations in place is what gets the results. And oftentimes in the past, when we did it in person, it was like, here's what you need to do. And they would have connection with me, but they didn't have a community. They didn't have that regular kind of like little nudge of a call every week that they could join or people sharing their wins and successes to go, oh, hang on a minute. I want some successes like that. I'm going to go back to my report and implement something else. And that's what's really been so magical on this journey is witnessing people really taking action because of the rest of the community supporting them um, and because of me showing up and being there as a support and guide throughout the journey, as opposed to just like a one off session where you're kind of given everything and now off you go. So the momentum kind of faded a little bit with that in the past. And um, 
I think that's where, you know, you asked about creating this multiple six figure business and um, the success has been in really making sure that our clients implement the recommendations because then we get these incredible okay. testimonials and stories and success stories from people who um, who then want to tell other people to do it. And it becomes this amazing spiral and ripple and um, that I didn't even realize was going to be the consequence of, um, you know, putting it online. Hmm. So the community part is a really important part of that. So how did you go about starting to build that community? Yeah. So the community part started, um, you know, with just a, a Facebook, like I actually have like two different communities. I have a community, which is like a free community where I often do meditations or I will do free trainings. Um, and um, that was kind of the basis of it all. I really just started with that. And we did some Facebook ads. I had people from my old world of like yoga and my holistic world that I invited into it. Um, and that's, it started off pretty small with a small group um, in the Facebook community. And then I would just share more wisdom, more tools, more tips about feng shui, and then invite them to join our program. And, you know, the very first time we ran our program, we had six people join and um you know at the very beginning obviously kind of keeping momentum with a, a small group was was harder but every time we would just increase the number of people who enrolled because of that ripple effect of the success stories mm. yeah so starting small and just um, serving those people really well getting um growing helping them grow their business or, or change their life in some meaningful way so that they then um, talk about you yeah and um we have had instances where like we've had one woman join and now both her sisters have joined we've had another woman join her neighbors are, are doing it you know best friends um that is so beautiful and then we also have had like we um have also done you know other marketing and promotion like obviously i do face we, have, we did facebook ads and you know i i, I do believe that um especially with say marketing in terms of like paid marketing um that like the perfect people still find find you that need you and that's for me the power of feng shui um that when you come into my sphere there's definitely something that needs to be adjusted and looked at and um in your home and it's just kind of following that nudge and that that um intuition to get there hmm. all right and and how does the podcast fit into your overall business so the podcast fits in because, um, well, first of all, I love talking. <laughs> if you didn't notice, <laughs> I love talking to people. Um, and I come across and meet so many inspirational people in my work that I just love sharing wisdom and giving people inspiration. So the Live Your Dreams Awake podcast really is kind of this oh, whole umbrella Um it kind of comes over the whole umbrella of what I do, because for me, um, you know, feng shui, you think, oh, it's just about doing, you know, putting the, energizing your house. But actually um, what it is, is actually creating an environment that helps support you to live to your fullest potential and realize your dreams and ambitions. So I really want to encourage people to live their dreams awake and to not just be like, oh, there it is above my vision board. It's about actually realizing it. So I want to encourage my own you know uh, clients to say well what do you want and go for it like really just go for it so that is one big thing um, that I also notice is that as the people in my program as they embrace the feng shui they start to get braver um, and one of the questions that I have asked so many of my clients and one of the parts of feng shui is that we cover all nine areas of your life. So if you've ever seen that wheel of life, if we've ever seen that wheel mm. of life, um, you know, it looks at all the different aspects. Feng shui is a bit like that. It looks at the wealth. It looks at your health. It looks at your career. It looks at your fame and reputation. Um, like each part of your home represents a different part of your life and business. So when we asked these women, like, what do you want? They're like, oh my God, like, I, I don't know. They'd never thought about what they really wanted. So it's kind of pushed them into, oh God, I can have more than just what I already have. And um, 
yeah, it just really has been like this incredible journey of inspiring people to think outside the box and to realize that, um, yeah, they don't have to be stuck anymore and they can just grow and live their dreams awake. Mm. Yeah, I love the title, Live Your Dreams Awake. All right, well, this this has been fascinating, Patricia. I, I've really enjoyed this and love love hearing your hint of an Irish accent there. Yes. Uh, I think it's a good time to move on to our innovation around the buzz, which is designed to yes. help our audience who are primarily innovators and leaders in their field with some tips from your experience. So I've got five mm -hmm. questions and hopefully you'll yes. give us a, a really insightful answer that will inspire the listener to go and do something awesome as a result today. Brilliant. What do you think the number one thing is anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Um, the one thing to be more innovative is to step outside of your normal wor world. Um, so whether it's like normally you spend lots of time in online communities, go and meet people in person, or, you know, you read these certain books, go read some other books or, you know, like really kind of like open your horizons to different things. You normally listen to podcasts about like personal development, listen to something, you know, about spirituality or about like, um, you know, comedian or something different. I think that we just need to access different places um, and we can get inspiration from lots of different, lots of different places that we don't even realize. Mm, yeah, that's great advice. And a lot of people have kind of, talked about that in in some terms and then connecting the dots back to what it is that you actually do because often there's mm -hmm. inspiration and i found back in my corporate day when we were doing work on for example we were doing work on uh, dirt shedding paint and we looked at what was going on in nature how plants kept their leaves clean because mm -hmm. that was important for breathing so there was some yes. inspiration from there Exactly. And I think it's one of the things for me with inspiration where I get inspiration is not when I'm sitting at my computer or trying to get inspiration. It's like when I'm in the shower, when I'm driving, when I'm walking, when I'm swimming in the sea. Like yesterday, I just had um, a thought I want to do a series of meditations around the Mercury retrograde to be able to, you know, ride out Mercury retrograde easily. And I was just thinking, God, I need a good name for that. And just as I was drifting to sleep, like I was just thinking about, like, I need a name for it. I just thought of that like question. I was just going to sleep last night. I was like, feng shui, your Mercury retrograde. And I'm like, oh my God, how could I not think of it earlier? You know, so it's just those moments of like space. Mm. I think space is one of the most important things um, as well for innovation. Yeah. Love it. Great story. Okay. And um, what's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? Um, the best thing I've done to develop new ideas is stepped away from my computer and just, you know, really allowed the ideas to unfold um, is one of the things. Yeah. The, the more I step away and just exactly that same word space, the more I step away from um, what I'm doing, um, the more idea, more ideas I get. <laughs> hmm. All right. I uh, love that. Yeah. That's consistent with what you're saying before about um, creating the space to uh, like allowing the your being. Mind to actually have the space. Yeah. It's becoming a being rather than a doing, you know, it's like we are human beings yes. and when we're human beings, <laughs> human. we can right. like rather than a human doing. <laughs> yes. Hmm. One of my business coaches, favorite sayings, are you a human being or a human doing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, do you have a favorite resource you use most often? Um, a favorite resource in terms of in particular, I'm just, just looking at my phone. Your own, your own work or? Um, my favorite resource. Um, I absolutely love my angel cards and my oracle cards, my tarot cards. Um, it may feel far out there, but for me, it's just like keeps me just this connected to spirit and source. Mm. Okay. And you have to know how to use those though, right? Or interpret uh, not really. Like, I think that for me, you know, my interp I started interpreting them um, accidentally, you know, it was just spending time, literally spending some time, like looking at the pictures and be like, oh, what does this mean? And then it's this sense of just you know, connecting and looking at the imagery and be like, what's it saying to me? Oh, okay. Um, and just allowing something else to be the, um, 
the yeah I feel like sometimes those kind of cards they can help you just kind of tune into um, a different wisdom that you need to hear that you are probably not allowing yourself to hear hmm. is that kind of a self-reflection tool in some way oh totally totally yeah hmm. all right now what's the best way to keep a project on track um hire a project manager <laughs> um <laughs> that is that is mine um that has literally been an absolute game changer in my business um i am a big visionary and um, have all these ideas um and uh, having hired a proper project manager has changed everything so hmm. that is so you focus on what you're good at and you um have yeah a, stay a really in your lane project. Hmm. yeah stay in your lane yeah Great. I love it. Okay. And what's the number one thing anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Um, just be you, you know, I think that that is like literally be yourself. It's differentiated. You are differentiated of just by owning yourself um, and not trying to compare yourself to other people or look at how other people are doing things. You know, um, we, there's like so many different, like there's, I'm sure there's, there's thousands and thousands of feng shui people out there in the world. Um, but I bring my specific flavor to it. And um, for me, it's that spiritual aspect of it um, in terms of the meditation and the connection and the energy and um, and the community access, um, the community part. Um, and I didn't realize that like one of my, uh, you know, gifts is a connector. Like I'm really good at bringing people together. You know, if you said to me, you're going, I need such and such a thing. I'd be able to, yeah, I know the person for you. This is the person for you. Um, and bringing people together is one of my favorite things to do. And that has been, you know, as I've just talked about community has been the biggest part and the win for my business. And I didn't even realize that that was how, that's how it became so successful is because we built this community, but that was one of my core strengths is bringing people together. So um, really honoring what your strengths are, um, as opposed to trying to force yourself to fit into a box of like, well, they're doing it that way. I have to do it that way. No, like really tune in and what are your strengths and use those to help you grow your business. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. I lo love the idea of honoring your strength. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks, Patricia. This has been really fabulous. Now, where, where can people find out more about you and maybe even get in touch and say thanks for what you've shared and um, get your hold of your book, The Happy Home, and also listen to the podcast? Yeah, sure. Well, you can find me at patricialohan.com. Um, I have plenty of guides there for people to get started with feng shui. So if you want to feng shui your office, there's a guide there. If you want to um, stop some money leaks out of your house, there's another one there for you. And there's also access to purchase my book, The Happy Home. And I have tons of tips um, on my blog as well, just little video quick tips to get you started. Um, obviously, you can come find me on my podcast, Live Your Dreams Awake. Um, but yeah, just come to patricialohan.com and you can find all of the resources there. I'd love to see you. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please come and, you know, follow me on Instagram, tag me, tell you you enjoyed it and just show me what action you're taking. You know, one of the big reasons why we have such a successful program is because we really encourage our clients to take action. And, you know, action is not in the word attraction for no reason. <laughs> so whatever you want, you have to take action for it. Um, so, yeah, come take action. Say hello. Connect with me. I'd love to hear from you. Yeah. All right. Um, I was going to ask about parting advice. So that sounds like you know, that might be the parting advice already. <laughs> parting yeah. advice for our listener today around action. Action. Exactly. And you know, is there something that you've been stalling on? One of my favorite things is like writing this list of like um, loose ends, things that need to be tied up because they kind of like, um, they stop that space, allowing you having that spaciousness that's important for you when um, you want to uh, innovate. Hmm. Yeah, I love it. Loose ends list and take action on those, get it off the list. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. finally, Patricia, who else should I get on this podcast and why? 
Um, who else did you get on this podcast and why? Um, I have a uh, woman who I um, recently had on my podcast, Early Days, Kelsey Abbott, and um, she teaches human design. I just love her energy. You know, I'm, I'm a connector, so I could be here for another 20 minutes telling you different people <laughs> should have the podcast. <laughs> um, but I absolutely loved Kelsey's energy um, and um, in terms of just bringing a very different perspective into your um podcast with using another kind of tool to analyze you and your strengths um it's a tool called human design so kelsey great all right well we'll get uh, connected to kelsey through you and um have her on the show as well sounds like a fascinating topic to explore some more yes exactly thank you so much all right well thanks so much for sharing your time and your insights today with us patricia this has been fascinating i've uh, been kind of watching feng shui for a while now having traveled a lot throughout asia and china in particular and i know it's oh, a yeah. thousand year old art or science or whatever you like to call it um so it's been fascinating to hear how you've turned it into a business and used it in business and and some of the insights that you've shared today have been wonderful so thank you and i know you're about to head out on a, a yacht i think onto the yes. gnc so all the best for today and all the best for the future and let's stay in touch thank you so much we'll have a great day i'm delighted to get to share with you and um thank you have an amazing day i hope you enjoyed that engaging and informative conversation with patricia and took something away from her episode i found it fascinating to learn more about her practical ways of using feng shui in both a personal and a business sense to create an environment conducive to peak performance. I'd love to know what you took away from Patricia's episode. Leave a comment below the blog post, which you can find at innovabiz.co forward slash Patricia Lohan. That is P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A-L-O-H-A-N. All lowercase all one word in novabiz.co forward slash Patricia Lohan. You'll also find contact information there for getting in touch with Patricia, as well as links to her website, her books, the Live Your Dream Awake podcast, her social media pages, and the other resources we spoke about in today's conversation. If you like this episode, please share it with two other people that it might help. Tag me in that chair and I'll reach out to you with a special surprise. Patricia suggested we have a conversation with professional coach, instigator of joy and the host of the Find Your Awesome podcast, Kelsey Abbott, on a future Innova Buzz podcast episode. So Kelsey, keep an eye on your inbox for an invitation from us to the Innova Buzz podcast, courtesy of Patricia Lohan. Tune in again to the next episodes of the Innova Buzz podcast where we've got yet more fantastic guests lined up, including content strategist and writer Lacey Boggs and improv coach Jay Suko. Thanks for listening to this episode. Make sure you subscribe to the show to be reminded of new episodes. It's free to subscribe. Leave a review if you like. Even if you don't like me, I'm okay with that. I'm asking you to leave a review because it helps other people find this show. Go to innovabiz.co to join our marketing transformation community and access a free gift my team and I made for you. It's the Marketing Master Mini Class. We want to give you everything you need to transform your marketing into a human-centered, relationship-focused growth engine. Until next time, I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz. Remember, be awesome and keep innovating. <laughs>